We all know that there are thousands of people that play Animal Crossing. It's Nintendo's second best-selling game out there. But there are still new people that purchase the game every day that have never played before and aren't sure what they're doing. This is Dawn with Pink Chair Gaming, and today we're going to look at some tips and tricks I wish I had known before I started playing the game. The first thing I want to talk about is your map. When you're a first-time island creator, you're not going to have a clue what type of island you're going to like. It takes playing the game to figure that out. The biggest thing to look for is items on a map that cannot be changed after the game starts, such as the location of resident services to the airport. Some people don't want it to be really close, like the one at the top right. Another thing to look at is the location of the rivers. Take note that there can be two rivers at the bottom, or one at the bottom and one on either side of the island. The best thing you can do is pick something that looks good to you. So the very first island you create, you may get months into the game and realize you really don't like your island. Sometimes it's so bad that you decide you want to start over. So the best advice I have is to really look at the maps. If nothing speaks out to you, it's okay to back out of the screen and try again. Once you find a map that you think is going to work for you, it's time to see your island in person. People who have been playing a really long time are quite picky about their island and want certain criteria filled when they choose it. For instance, they want a certain type of fruit, a certain airport color, or even certain villagers. Once you arrive at your destination, if something about the island you picked out just isn't speaking to you, close out the game and try again. For me, this island has an orange airport and villagers that I'm not really fond of, so I'm going to try again. It may take a few times of starting over to find that perfect island for you, but I promise it's out there somewhere. I got lucky in my search and found my perfect island after only three tries. Once you've found that perfect island, it's time to get started making it your own. The first big decision you have to make in the game is where you want your tent and your villagers tents to reside. I wouldn't put too much time and effort into this. Keep in mind that they can be moved later. It does cost money to move them, but it can be done. A lot of people put their tents on the beach to keep them out of the way. I find that eventually they get in my way there, so I decided to put them off to the side somewhere, away from resident services and the airport. The next thing you need to know about is naming your island. Once you name your island, it cannot be changed, so be sure to call it something you'll be happy with for a long time. Now that we've gotten past the introductions to the game, it's time to start working on our island. Tom Nook has just informed us that we need 5,000 Nook miles to pay off our moving fees. Here are some of the best ways to earn those first 5,000 miles. Open up your Nook phone and click on the Nook Miles app. This is your best tool for seeing what's out there for earning miles. Once you've earned miles, you'll see a blue banner. Click on it to claim your miles. The total number of miles you've earned will be shown at the top right. You can use the right joystick to jump ahead to the next achievement instead of having to scroll through all of them. Once you're back on the main page, take a look at all of the achievements out there and see what's available to you. Here's a quick list of my favorite ways of earning these first 5,000 miles. Before you can start earning miles fishing and catching bugs, be sure to visit Tom Nook so you can attend his DIY workshop. He will give you the recipes to craft a fishing rod, net, campfire, and a simple DIY bench. While you're in resident services, be sure to check out the ABD so you can begin shopping and take advantage of earning Nook miles by signing in every day. You'll also want to check out the recycle box and pick up any free items available to you. When you first start catching fish and bugs on the island, be sure to make a note when it says yes when you catch it. This means it's a new creature and you want to make sure you donate it. Once you've collected five unique creatures, be sure to take them to Tom Nook and donate them. This will start the process of bringing blathers to the island to get the museum. While donating your five creatures, Tom Nook will reward you along the way. This includes some more DIYs including an axe 
which you can use to get wood from trees. You want to make sure that you always donate the first instance of a new creature. If you catch something while you're waiting on the museum to open, just place it out front so it's ready the next day. If you're ever unsure what you're supposed to be doing in the game, just ask Tom Nook, what should I do? He'll make sure you stay on track. One of the tools you'll need in the game to shoot down balloons is a slingshot. This tool is not given to you during regular gameplay. You'll need to purchase this DIY from Timmy inside of Resident Services. Before you chop down trees, it's advisable to shake them using a net. This is because sometimes wasps can come out of the trees and sting you. But don't worry, talk to one of your villagers after you've been stung and they'll give you a recipe for medicine that you can craft at any time. Once you've earned 5,000 Nook Miles, it's time to pay off your debt to Tom Nook. Just go into Resident Services and speak to him about my moving fees. After your moving fees are paid for, he will then let you know that you have the option of upgrading your tent into a house. He will also explain that there is now a Nook Miles Redemption service available through the ABD and Resident Services. This is basically shopping using Nook Miles instead of belts. Once you've completed ordering your house, make sure to open up the Nook Miles app to see that you now have Nook Miles Plus. Click the plus icon on the Joy-Con to access them. At the beginning of each day, you'll be given five rewards that are worth twice the regular value of other achievements. Try your best to do these each day as the rewards definitely add up. Once you complete one of these achievements, another one will show up that can then be redeemed for face value. When collecting resources from rocks, make note that you have one rock on your island that is a money rock. You never know which one of your rocks is it, so make sure to always hit all of your rocks to get your money's worth. When you first started the game, you were asked to gather branches. Those branches were just lying around on the ground. But if you're ever in a spot where you can't find any, just shake your trees a bit and some will fall out. When you first start redeeming Nook Miles for items, be very selective of what you buy. I would definitely invest in a wetsuit, tool ring, and pocket organization guide. Next on your list would be the pretty good tools recipes. Anything else on that list can definitely wait until later. Once you've purchased your tool ring, use the up directional arrow on your left joystick to access it. You can then customize which tool goes in each slot and it makes getting your tools out of your pocket a breeze. When day two arrives, Tom Nook will let you know that the airport is now open for service and Blathers has arrived on the island. When you get your mail the second day, you will have a present from your mom that contains three pieces of fruit. Make sure you don't sell these. The only way to obtain this fruit again would be to visit a friend's island who has them. You cannot get them naturally in the game. One of the first things you want to do after Blathers arrives on the island is go visit him. He will let you know that you need to donate 15 items in order to open the museum. To help you with your quest, he will give you the recipes for a vaulting pole and a shovel. Once you've submitted your 15 items, Blathers will be busy getting ready to open the museum and won't take any more donations until that time. While walking around on your island, be sure to collect resources from your trees and rocks. When you go to Resident Services, Timmy is going to ask you to help build the shop. You will need 30 of each type of wood and iron nuggets. You don't have to submit all of your items at one time. Once you've collected 30 of at least one type of item, you can go ahead and submit them to Timmy. He will make sure to reward you for your efforts. When you're acquiring resources from your rocks, it is helpful to dig three holes behind the rock before hitting it. You want to hit the rock immediately one after the other to ensure you get all eight rewards from the rock. If you've hit all of the rocks on your island and still don't have enough iron nuggets for the shop, this is the perfect opportunity to use the Nook Miles ticket given to you. Just go to the airport and tell Orville you want to fly, and then use the option to use your Nook Miles ticket. As you progress in the game, you will start to add new villagers to your island. You're able to start villager hunting for your first three villagers before you get to that point in the story. These villagers are lazy, normal, and peppy. 
Be sure to hunt for them before you place your housing plots to ensure you get who you want and the plots don't autofill. As you're walking around your island, be sure to look for a shiny object on the ground. Dig it up to produce a money bag. But make sure you don't close the hole before burying more money in it. You can bury either 1,000 or 10,000 bells and a money tree will grow that will produce three times what you bury. But don't bury anything other than one or 10,000 bells. There's no guarantee you'll get your same return on investment. If you don't like the placement of your tree, you can dig it up and bury it somewhere else. The very first day that Nook's Cranny opens up, make sure to go inside so you can be introduced to Mabel. This will start the process of getting Abel sisters on your island. Make sure you check outside of Nook's Cranny every day to see what the hot item of the day is. This can be an easy way to make some extra bells. On the day that Tom Nook gets a phone call during the morning announcements, be sure to stop by resident services. Tom Nook will ask for your help in setting out three plots of land so more villagers can move to the island. Remember when we talked about villager hunting? You want to make sure you found your villagers before you place these plots of land. When you place your bridge to allow you easier access to other parts of the island, it can be a little tricky placing it. The land must be straight and not have any bends to it. You also can't place your bridge too close to the edge of the island. If you get a warning message, just keep trying, you'll eventually get the hang of it. When you're placing your plots of land, it's okay if there is some overlap where the yards of the two houses are. As long as the requested items are within those boundaries, you'll be fine. If you did your villager hunting ahead of time, after you go into a building and come back out, a sold sign should be on your plots, letting you know which villager is moving in. If you dig up your bells for your money tree and determine you don't have 10,000 bells to bury in it, don't despair. Just leave the hole open until you've earned enough money and then come back later and bury it. Just don't close the hole without burying your money as you won't be able to open it back up again. It's not going to take too long before you start to get duplicate DIY recipes in the game. If you don't have any friends that you can give them to, you can just sell them at Nook's Cranny. When you see this groovy character walking on your island, be sure to talk to him. He will invite you to come visit his island. Even though you can't do a whole lot right now, once you progress further in the game, more opportunities will open up on his island that you definitely want to take advantage of. One of my favorite ways to earn extra bells is by diving in the ocean. To do this, just open up your pockets and put on your wetsuit. Then you can just walk into the water and continually press A to start swimming. You want to look for the little bubbles coming out of the water. Once you get close enough, hit Y to dive under the water and then keep pressing A to swim towards it. Once you're on top of the shadow, it will automatically catch the creature for you. During your expedition, if you catch a scallop, you're likely to be visited by Pascal. He loves collecting scallops. It's okay to tell him you want to keep the first one so you can donate it to Blathers. I promise he'll come back later when you catch your second. When you give Pascal your scallops, he will reward you with DIYs and sometimes items, including pearls. When you see Leaf visiting your island, be sure to stop and take a look at what he has. His selection changes each time he comes to visit but eventually you'll be able to acquire all of the shrubs, flowers, and produce the game has to offer. When Tom Nook offers his customization workshop, be sure to attend. He'll give you a stack of customization kits for free, which allows you to make all kinds of changes to items around the island. It's what helps make the island your own. One of the items you can purchase from Nook Shopping is the warp pipe from Mario. These aren't just for decoration, they actually work. Buy two of them and place them in different parts of your island and you can easily get from one part of your island to the other. When you see this shady character on your island, go ahead and talk to him. This is Red, the traveling art dealer. He will invite you to come visit his boat, which is docked at your secret beach at the back of your island. Once inside, you'll have the opportunity to look at his artwork. You're only allowed to purchase one piece of artwork each time he visits. The catch? some of his artwork isn't real. It is highly suggested that you download one of the Animal Crossing apps so you can look up the difference between what is real and what is fake. I don't want you to be swindled out of your money. When you visit Harv's Island to go into his house, 
Make sure to move all of the items in the room. This will allow you to catalog the items and you can then purchase them from Nook Shopping. We are finally at the point in the game where Resident Services upgrades from a tent to a building. From this point on, your main objective is to try and get your island to a 3 star rating so you can unlock terraforming. The best advice I can give for getting to a 3 star rating is place any and all items on your island even if it looks like chaos. Make sure to plant plenty of flowers and pull all of your weeds. Keep in mind that you have to have at least 8 villages on your island so it's not worth asking Isabel about your rating until that time. And with that, that's the end of my tips and tricks for this video. I hope at least one tip was able to help you out. Please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!